So the topic of my talk uh, is NGRX tips for working with nested tree data. So first of all, I'm a software engineer at a company called IdeSync, and we really, really love all that Angular, TypeScript, and NGRX because how fast and performant it allows us to develop our apps. So our clients are happy, we are happy, so everyone's happy, you know. And before getting started with it, I wanted to give a big shout out to my friend Alan, who couldn't be here, but he also helped me a lot to get this presentation together. So with that said, let's get started. So what uh, what do I mean with nested tree structures? So there are there are mostly data that we get, for example, from a backend or from an API. And it has like a recursive shape. So each node or each element can have as many children as it wants. And each children will then again share the same shape. So we can think of that when we have, for example, a file system. So we have folders and files. We have a tree, of course. Like each tree node can have all its children. And each children will have its, its own children, so on and so forth. So when migrating some parts of our apps to NGRX, we discovered that it just wasn't as performant as we thought if we just dumped the like the whole tree inside the store. Because any update, as little as it was, would then re-trigger our selectors, our our state, all our components would re-render. And at some point we had some very big uh hierarchies that we wanted to show to the client and then just a small change like I don't know a highlighting or a notification would make the app feel really slow. So so one way so here we have some example of what I mean. So you have like a JSON which is deeply nested. I've only gone I've only went to three levels. And you can see that each node has its children. So what we do for start what we did for starters was try to change that nested data to a flat structure. It's very similar to what NGRX entity does, where it hashes each element by its ID. So then we can find it uh, faster once we need to get one from the store instead of having to loop through, through all the array items. So the tree data I showed earlier, we converted it to a tree node. And then we have a tree node view model, which we will work with uh, with our selectors. So here we have this state. We have a node property, which holds all the nodes in a flat structure. We have top level node IDs, which are like the root IDs, because some of our trees have more than one ID, more than one root element, sorry. And then we have a, a property that's children by parents. So we have, it's like a hash of each parent and its children ID, so we can find them even faster when we need to retrieve a node with each direct children. Then we want to optimize this a little bit further with some inspiration with uh, Tim's article about parameterized selectors. So we built some selector factories, uh, basically by playing with this no all nodes property and this uh, children by parent we can only run this selector, uh, sorry, we can make that this selector only emits when either the node has changed. So for example, its name change, uh, its toggle the state change or its highlighted state or whatever change or when it's, ch its children change. So that way we can fire this selector only when any of those properties that are of interest to one of our components change. And the last optimizations we did was to kind of keep uh, like, a, like a cache of all our selectors. So the first time we need a selector for a given node, we build, we build it and we store it in a top level nodes property in one of our facades. And then the next time a new component, a new component requested, we will just give it back the old selector, which which will still have its cache value because all selectors get memoized. So maybe if I show you in a small demo, it can make a bit more of sense. 
Um, I don't know if you can see the browser screen. Can you? Sorry. No, it says no. mini demo. Ah, oh, yeah, then I shared the wrong screen. My bad. Uh, and where is Scrum? I can find Scrum. There is, sorry. So here we have one of those trees I mentioned with all the nodes that are already loaded. So if I'm toggling or I'm changing some properties, I can see that this selector is only emitting new values for the nodes that actually change. So for example, the node one to four changed from toggle to not toggle, uh, expanded to not expanded, sorry. But not, not all the nodes change. And even if my selectors are being rerun, my smart and dumb components are not. So I can actually reuse the selectors. So the heaviest operation, which is actually rendering the view, I can save some cycles of rendering. And so far that has proven to work really well for us. Uh, our we have some next steps like integrating this with Angular Material, but we, we just wanted to, to take it slowly. I have some time left. I could show you some little snippets of code. This is our smart tree node component. We, we, play along, we, we play a lot with that uh, small and dumb component because it really helped us uh, re reason about what our components do and how they get their data and whatever. So as I mentioned, this component is getting a stream of all the, no of all the node information for a particular node that it gets by an input variable. And well, it also handles uh, expanding or collapsing that particular, particular node. And then we also have a dump component or a simple component which, which only receives this view model as an input and it just emits its event to signal the store when it's been toggled. And of course, each node, each simple node, so to call it, will render as many smart tree nodes as it has for its, child for its children. So this way also allows us to, to capitalize on Angular's unchanged detection. So both components have an on-push change detection. So on top of the store only emitting when something really changed, we have the components render when they really change. So when they're destroyed, for example, I collapse or expanded some node or when the name changed or when something changed. So as I mentioned so far, this is working really nice as a proof of concept for us. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to share it with you guys. And yeah, really, I, I also wanted to give thanks to, of course, the NGRX teams, the NGRX team, sorry for building such an amazing tool. Mm -hmm.